Welcome back. In this section of the course, we're going to talk about filters and slicers. And this is a great way to subset and alter your data on the fly. However, first, let's dive in and answer the previous homework question. So we built a hierarchy, and our hierarchy was a campaign hierarchy that started with the ad manager, went to the next level with campaign, and ad group. So to answer that question, let's start by pulling in a hierarchy again. So we just click campaign hierarchy. It brings it into a regular table. We know we want to look at this maybe to start off in a pivot table. So click matrix. Now we have the level of ad manager. The homework question was how many ad groups did each manager manage and what was the average spend also? So we can click spend because we know this is the measure that we want to evaluate. Now we have spend, but we know the default aggregation of the value that we bring in is sum. So by clicking the down arrow in the value section, we can see that it is aggregated at sum. But we want to know the average, so we move down to average. And as you see here, we also have different levels of aggregation. So if we click average, now we know one part of our question, the average spend per manager. The next question we want to know is how many ad groups did each manager have? So of course we can look at the hierarchy and we can see that the ad group is there, but we don't have a count. Now we can see the name of the ad group. However, this ad group has appeared multiple times in our data. So let's go over and we can take a look by clicking the data icon or the table icon. And we can see that ad group, this ad group was used multiple times throughout our data from 2005 onward. So let's click back over to our report view. We have our hierarchy. Now we want to count how many times we've seen this ad group in our data set. So we know we're going to evaluate ad group. So I have that visualization. I'm going to pull ad group and values and we can see it says first. That does not answer our question, right? We want to know, not first, and if we click the down arrow, and we don't want to know last, we don't want to know count distinct, we want to know every time that has appeared. So let's click count, and now we can go back up, and we can go up one more level, and now we can see count of ad group for those managers. And that answers the homework question. In this video, I want to talk about filters. So move over and we have a new section here in Power BI, which is the filters pane. And every value or dimension that you have used in your visualization, appears in this filters pane. If we click into any of these, we can filter the visual. So in this section, we have filter visual. 
in this section we can filter on the whole page and then we can add a filter across all pages in our report so let's explore if you click the down arrow we can just limit all the data to just Jess so let's click that ad manager and we can see it changes the visual in that data if we wanted to limit the whole page by Jess we would need to bring in the ad manager into this section so drag and drop it and we just want to see Jess and we should see both of these visuals change to reflect only what Jess used and you can see it altered another way we can filter is by using the slicer I'm highlighting the slicer in the visual pane I'm gonna clear my selection by just clicking a white spot to bring that in and then I'm going to highlight slicer and then I'm going to go back up to add manager and now I have a slicer if I click Jess it also goes back and provides a filter on the whole page this is another way to give your user a way to filter the data based on the slicer you are not limited to just one slicer you can have multiple slicers on a page so let's copy and paste and now we have two ad manager slicers but I'm going to replace this one with campaign so highlight campaign drag it over and now you have campaign so I can click campaign one which will slice everything even the other slicer campaign two and campaign three also using the date slicer gives us a lot more options now we can also change this slicer from a drop down from we can also change this slicer from a list to a drop down by clicking the arrow we can also clear what the slicer is selecting by clicking the clear se selection erase icon if we bring in a date slicer we have even more options so I'm gonna click the white part of the report or an empty space I'm gonna click slicer and I'm gonna choose date your default structure is a slider with the date because it goes from one numeric value to the other so we can see this spans from 2000 the first of 2015 to July 24 2017 and I can drag and change my data just to reflect January 4th to July 24th in the year 2017 and we can see that the data changes I can also change the style of this from between to before which gives us one option to after which gives us a start option to a list which will be very long to a drop down which we have seen before or we can even go relative so and we can look at the last one year or month or week or day so we can change our data quite a bit with this option.
And remember, we can clear everything by just clicking the no option applied. So the default for all your slicers, if you use a number, so if I bring in another slicer and I bring in our total spin, we will also have a slicer. So you can see how the data changes based on your numeric spin. This is a good way to filter and change your data. There are a lot of options there. For this section, you have no homework. I want you to spend some time playing around with slicers, hierarchies, and your visuals. I'll see you in the next video.